Hello and welcome to this session of blockchain. Myself, Saurav and I am part of the Simply Learn team. So let's get started. What's in it for you today? Let's discuss what is blockchain technology and what are its features like public distributed ledger, how encryption works, proof of work, algorithm and mining. Now what is blockchain? Imagine two friends living far away and would like to transfer money using blockchain technology. Blockchain is a decentralized system of secure and trusted distributed databases. It's a distributed ledger which records and shares the transaction details across many nodes which are part of the network so that the data is not modified. So each and every transaction which happens on a blockchain network is distributed across all the nodes on the blockchain each and every participant has the same copy of the ledger and it's an immutable ledger once a record or a transaction is registered it cannot be modified blockchain was originally introduced to timestamp digital documents and prevent tampering of records in simple terms a chain of blocks that contain information is, is called blockchain now when a transaction occurs its related information is recorded into a block so as you see a transaction initiated in one corner of the globe can get registered on the block and then that block is being verified validated by the miners of the public ledger and then added to the main blockchain a block contains aggregated transactions in a single block which a miner has to validate and in lieu of that the miner gets rewarded now let's take a closer look at what all are the components of a block so whenever we talk about a blockchain what is actually a block and what it consists of now there are four major components each block contains a previous hash data data is nothing but the aggregation of the transactions which are aggregated in the block a nuance value and the hash of the block itself now what is previous hash previous hash is the attribute which is connecting a block to its previous block so the previous hash attribute consists of the hash value of its previous block data it consists the details of the sender's address the receiver's address and the transaction amount so basically there could be multiple transactions amongst multiple senders and receivers so each block will consist n number of transactions and each transaction will have a sender's address a receiver address and a transaction amount nonce so basically the bitcoin uses a proof of work algorithm and in order to execute the algorithm nonce is a random value used to vary the output of the hash value so proof of work is the process of transaction verification done in blockchain hash hash is like a digital fingerprint it is the fingerprint of the current block now where it takes an input value of the previous hash the data and the norms and produces an output value of fixed length so bitcoin network uses sha256 hashing algorithm to generate a 256 bit length hash and this is the output it looks something like a hexadecimal value now what are the features of blockchain a blockchain is a decentralized public distributed ledger that is used to record transaction across many computers so this is a sample transaction which you are seeing these are set of three transactions a transferring money to b b to c and c to b a distributed ledger is a database that is shared among all the users who are part of the blockchain network the transactions are accessed and verified by users associated to the Bitcoin network thereby making it less prone to cyber attack it is actually enclosed within all the participants who are part of the network now let's take an example where these Bitcoin users are transferring money so here we have example like Bella is trying to transfer money to John John is trying to transfer money to Elsa and Elsa is trying to transfer money to Jack so these are the three transactions which are to be initiated now suppose these transactions were being happening on a central ledger and it gets corrupted so there is a chance of the data getting tampered to solve this problem a public distributed ledger plays a vital role now it ensures that users part of this cycle have a copy of the transaction detail each user will have a copy of each transaction Bella John Elsa Jack they all have the same 
ledger and this is what is called as distributed ledger everyone is having the same copy now in case one of the users like elsa misplaces her transaction detail she can easily be corrected by the other participants because they have the golden copy the correct copy or if either of them attempts to alter the record the alternate transaction copies with the other users will negate the alteration because they will see that amongst all the participants only one participant is having a different copy they will negate the copy of the user and they will rectify it encryption blockchain eliminates unauthorized access by using cryptographic algorithm sha256 to ensure that the blocks are kept secure so sha256 is the cryptographic algorithm which is used each user in the blockchain has their own keys so any user which onboards a typical blockchain network is always provided with two set of keys one is private one is public private key is known only to the sender also it is used to confirm if the origin of the transaction is legitimate public key it is also used to uniquely identify the user but it is shared by the sender with every transaction it floats on the blockchain network and we will see how now let's take a look at a typical transaction verification process suppose a sender wants to send a message he will pass the message through the hash function and generate a hash value of the message now after the hash value is being created it is passed through a signature algorithm and with the private key a digitally signed document is created now the transaction message original message the digitally signed document and the public key are transmitted to the receiver now at the receiver end the transaction message is passed through a hash function to get a hash value and that hash value is compared with the hash value obtained by passing the digital signature and public key through a verification function and then both the values are compared now let's see how the hash function works the hash function creates a unique digital fingerprint of data you pass the message through the hashing function and it generates a hash value this hash value is called a digital print it has a very unique property any hashing function is a one way function it cannot be reversed you cannot decode the original value from the hashed value it is a one way encryption so here are some examples whatever be the size of the input data the hash value is always of 256 bit length and we will take a look at the demo at the end of this session where i'll show you how to generate a hash value using sha256 now let's consider an example of gmail using hashing algorithm whenever you are entering the username and password that password is never directly persisted in any of the gmail's database it is persisted using hashing function so once you have created your password and again once you log in your password is again passed to the hashing function and compared with the hash value persisted in the database and once both these hash value matches then only you are allowed to log in so every time you log into gmail your password is hashed into a value and compared against the one stored in the database the hash value is matched with the one in database and then the inbox is displayed on your screen now let's take a look of what is the proof of work algorithm proof of work is a method to validate transactions in a blockchain network by solving a complex mathematical puzzle and this whole process is called mining finding the nonce value is the mathematical puzzle that users or miners need to solve in the bitcoin network so it takes huge amount of computational power and resources of the miner in order to find out that nuance value users trying to solve the puzzle are called miners the puzzle is solved by determining a nonce that generates a hash value and results an output lesser than a target so in any proof of work algorithm there is always a target which is predefined for a block the miner has to use the nonce in order to generate a hash which has to be less than the target miners verify transactions within a block and adds the block to the blockchain when they have confirmed and verified the transaction with proof of work miners compete against each other to solve the mathematical puzzle the first miner who solves the puzzle is rewarded and when a block is solved the transactions contained in a block are also considered valid and the bitcoins associated with the transactions then get deducted from the originator or the sender and moves to the receiver now let's see how proof of work works 
so let's take a look at the block and its components the previous block hash it stores the hash value of the previous block of the blockchain data it contains the list of all the transactions which have been aggregated in the block nonce is the random value which is used to generate a hash value less than the target and hash is the digital signature of the block itself the hash is generated using a hashing function called sha256 now using the nonce when the hash is generated if its output is less than the target then the puzzle is deemed to be solved the block is considered to be validated if not then the miner increments the nonce by value 1 and then again rehashes generate a hash and goes through the cyclic process till the time it is not able to generate a hash less than the target in blockchain the target is adjusted every 2016 blocks which is approximately every 14 days the average time of block formation is 10 minutes and the difficulty target of the puzzle increases or decreases depending on the time it takes to mine the blocks so it is the inbuilt network which is generating the target for the puzzle to get solved and it fluctuates the difficulty based on the time it takes to mine the block proof of work is hard to produce but very easy for miners to verify so point to be noted here is once the block is hashed the remaining miners are supposed to validate the work which one miner has done but they are not required to find the nonce again so basically the miner who is supposed to earn the bitcoin has done the hard work but the others miners on the network just have to verify his validation in blockchain when miners use their resources time money electricity etc to validate a new transaction and record them on the public ledger they are given a reward now that reward is in bitcoins itself which as of today stands at 12.5 bitcoins and to add there is no other way that the bitcoins can be generated in a bitcoin network it is only through mining now the bitcoin network internally halves the reward after every 21k blocks which is approximately every four years so now subsequently whenever the time period will end the mining reward will get reduced to 6.25 btc i hope you had a great learning session and i'll meet you in the next session thank you Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.